Welcome! In this video, I'm going to show you how to place weapons on your custom forge map. But first, please understand that all maps are different, and your map may require different weapon placements than what I'm about to show you. The weapon placements I'm about to show you are just a general guideline to get you started, and give you an idea about how you can put weapons on your map. Okay, this is a sample map that I'm going to use for this video. This map is a symmetrical map, meaning that it is exactly or almost exactly the same on both sides. As you can see, I've already finished creating the geometry of this map, but now I need to place weapons. You'll want to have a varied set of weapons for your map. Also keep in mind that your map is going to be played by different players with different play styles. Some players like to play close range, some like medium range, and some like long range. Try to have something for everyone. The first thing I'm going to do is decide where to put the main power weapons. Power weapons are weapons that can do very high damage in a single attack, usually being able to kill an opponent in one or two hits. Examples of power weapons are the energy sword, the rocket launcher, the shotgun, and the sniper. Power weapons are going to be the main focus of your player's attention, especially during Slayer. Generally, in a symmetrical map such as this one, you should try to put power weapons near the middle of the map, away from each team's base, in order to make your players work for their reward. It is okay to put a power weapon inside a team's base, but for your map to be balanced, be sure to put the same weapon, or an equivalent weapon, in the other team's base. Another thing to keep in mind is that your players should not be able to pick up a power weapon and then immediately be able to use it effectively at its spawn location. So for example, don't put shotguns in close quarters areas, and don't put sniper rifles in high places where the player can oversee a large area of the map, because then the player will more than likely camp at that area until they run out of ammo, and by that time, they will have gotten some easy kills. To start off, I'm going to put a shotgun over here, because this is an open space, and the player will be required to move away from this area in order to use the shotgun effectively. The shotgun doesn't work well in wide open spaces. For most power weapons, I recommend putting the spawn time for 120 seconds, and reducing the number of spare clips down to one. This way, a skilled player could get some kills and then be done with the weapon, allowing it to respawn and give someone else a chance to get it. In certain circumstances, it may be more appropriate to reduce clips to zero and reduce spawn time to 60 seconds. Another thing you may consider is to keep the spare clips at two, but increase spawn time to 180 seconds. The only disadvantage there, though, is that it will allow a skilled player to maintain a high kill streak with so much ammo. Okay, now I'm going to put a focus rifle over here. This is a good spot because this area is close quarters, and these columns make it difficult to get a good vantage point on other players from this position. So when someone comes and picks this up, they will need to move away from here to use it effectively. Not that there's anything wrong with camping, but since camping is a powerful tactic, you don't want to make it too easy for someone to do it, because it could make it really difficult for other players to kill this guy, and your players will quickly become frustrated after a few deaths. Another thing to keep in mind is that the spare clips option does not affect weapons that use a battery system instead of ammo. I'm talking about weapons that start with a finite amount of battery charge and their ammunition cannot be replenished. Examples of battery weapons are plasma pistols, plasma rifles, plasma repeaters, energy swords, focus rifles, and gravity hammers. I personally consider the grenade launcher as a semi-power weapon. It's a formidable weapon to be sure, but I wouldn't quite take it over a sniper or rockets. I usually like to set the respawn time for 60 seconds with a spare clip value of 5, since it doesn't have that much to begin with. Okay, I think I'm done placing power weapons for now, so now I'm going to place more semi-power weapons. Semi-power weapons are formidable weapons that will assist you in getting kills more easily than a standard weapon, but aren't quite as powerful as a power weapon. Examples of semi-power weapons, based on my opinion, are grenade launchers, plasma pistols, and needlers. I'm going to put some needlers in these little balcony areas. Typically, I like to set needlers for a respawn time of 45 seconds. Just in case this map is used for free-for-all games, I'm going to put a plasma pistol in each team's base. I usually like to set plasma pistols for a 60 second respawn time. Now that I'm done putting down semi-power weapons, it's time to put down standard weapons. Standard weapons are weapons that players will typically spawn with in most game modes. These weapons do not have the ability to deal immediate high damage to players like how snipers and swords can. 
I recommend keeping the spawn time on all standard weapons at the default 30 seconds. Okay, now, I would probably say 4 out of 5 times your players are going to have an assault rifle as their primary weapon. For this reason, I like to put some of them around their base to resupply their ammo. Also, I like to max the spare clips on assault rifles to 5. Another good reason to put assault rifles down, even though most players will have them already, is for those games where they don't have them. The assault rifle is not a bad weapon, it's actually pretty decent at short to medium range. So, if someone wants to use an assault rifle when they don't have one already, they have the option to do so. Oh yeah, another thing I should mention is save often when making your map. You never know when you're going to make a big mistake that cannot easily be repaired, such as deleting an important platform or building. Or, maybe your power will go out. Better safe than sorry. Alright, now I'm just going to put some DMRs and needle rifles down. DMRs and needle rifles are good all-around weapons, and many players like to use them, so I'm going to be sure to put down a good amount. If you're going to use both DMRs and needle rifles, try to keep the amount of DMRs and needle rifles the same. For example, if your map is going to have four DMRs, make sure that there are four needle rifles as well. This way, there won't be a shortage of ammo for a single one of those weapons, unless your map is intended to favor one over the other. Make sure your map has plenty of weapons to go around, so the player will not have to search for long to find a better gun or ammo. At the same time, try not to overdo it. Putting too many weapons on the map makes your map look cluttered and will make it difficult for you to put down objectives later. Always try to space your weapons apart from each other. If weapons are too close to each other, players trying to pick up one of them may accidentally pick up the other one. Avoid player frustration by keeping a fair distance between weapons. Also, in a normal map, don't put two of the same weapon right next to each other. When the player picks up the gun, they will likely touch the other one and pick up additional ammo, giving them more ammo than they really need, and preventing another teammate from being allowed to use the gun. I usually like to put a few pistols down, as well as plasma repeaters every now and then. A lot of people underestimate the plasma repeater, but it's pretty much equivalent to an assault rifle, if not better, because plasma typically does more damage to shields than bullets do. Okay, I think I'm done placing weapons. Let's go to a top-down view. First, I placed my power weapons at critical central locations on my map. We have the shotgun up here on the west side, and the focus rifle down here on the east side. My semi-power weapons are here, four needlers on the balconies, a plasma pistol in each team's base, and the grenade launcher in the middle of the map. Standard weapons are two assault rifles in each team's base, DMRs and needle rifles a short distance out, as well as a pistol on each catwalk. Plasma repeaters are further in, near the wall. As you can see, my map is decorated with weapons now. My players will not have to spend very much time locating a weapon or ammo, but I didn't overdo it. Now we need some grenades. Typically, I like to just place one grenade with each standard weapon. I put frag grenades next to human weapons, and plasma grenades next to covenant weapons. I normally keep the standard 15 second respawn time on grenades. I generally advise not putting grenades next to power weapons or semi-power weapons. You can put armor abilities on your map if you want to, but be very careful. They will almost always change the way your map is played, and can be game-breaking in certain scenarios. For example, never put a drop shield nearby a shotgun or energy sword. A single skilled player using drop shield in conjunction with one of those power weapons will be nearly unstoppable. Most maps can do without them. Health stations are very important to your map, but are commonly overlooked by other forgers. Typically, I recommend using all of your health stations for your map. Try to spread them out. Put down as many as you can so that there will always be first aid nearby if your player is needed. Good places to put them are inside team bases, high traffic areas, and secluded areas off to the side. Try to put them on the walls, about four units of measurement from the ground. Avoid sticking them directly on glass. It just doesn't look good. And finally, I think you should avoid special effects for your map. In my opinion, they make your map look less impressive. I prefer to use the default natural colors of the world. This concludes my tutorial tips for weapon placement. By watching this video, you have gained experience in your skill to make a proper multiplayer map. Thanks for watching, and please don't forget to rate this video.